Did you know that emotional healing isn't actually about making bad emotions go away? And I know that sounds a little bit weird, especially when I'm in a circumstance where I work with clients every single day who are showing up in emotional distress and we are trying to transform that. This week, as we bring a close to our Healing Transformation series, we're actually gonna talk about what the true most important goal of transformation is, and it's not just about feeling better. This is Gene Montrose telling welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast recorded live to take from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 587, originally aired November 27th, 2023. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time of day you're getting a chance to join me. Thanks for spending a little time with me today. Today, we're continuing our healing fundamental series, and we're going to be talking about what the actual goal of transformation is and I think you're going to find it a little bit surprising, but once you understand this particular insight, it is going to transform every single time you sit down to tap, every single time you sit down to do transformation, regardless of the tool that you use. Now, as we step into this, I'm going to be talking about tapping. Tapping is the tool set that I use. It's not the best tool. It's not the only tool, but it is super, super powerful, and I use it every single day. If you are new to tapping, all you need to do is follow that little red arrow in the upper right right hand corner, click on the link. It will take you to learn to tap.com where I'll share the basics with you so you can start tapping every single day in simple, straightforward ways. My life is so much better because I was introduced to tapping. My life has been transformed. My health has been transformed. My mental well-being has transformed. It has led me to work with clients from all over the world. And some of my dearest friends have come from the tapping community. And in the last 17 or 18 years that it's been a part of my life, it has transformed it. And I honestly couldn't imagine my life without it. My original introduction to tapping came from Gary Craig. Gary Craig created the first single algorithm version that was mass consumed. And he called it emotional freedom technique. I will forever be in debt to carry and his willingness to share this tool set with the world in such an open way. But even with that being said, I've always struggled with the name emotional freedom technique. And there's three primary reasons why I don't love the name emotional freedom technique. The first is it is in marketing language, what we would call post transformational language. It's not talking about the problem that it's solving. It's talking about how we feel after the fact. And anybody who has ever done a successful round of tapping know what that's like to be free of that burden of that struggle and on the other side of it. But it's hard to explain to someone before they've experienced that. Number two, I think the name emotional freedom technique makes a lot of sense and is very appealing to some people, but I don't think it's actually appealing to everyone. Um, for two and a half years, when I lived in Baltimore, Maryland, I actually taught an anger management class in a county jail. And these guys showed up to the class voluntarily because they recognized the fact that anger was causing them to make very, very poor decisions, that anger was putting them into the positions where some of them ended up incarcerated. And so the class was called Advanced Anger Management. It was about what they wanted to do. And at the end of the class, they would bring other folks the next time we taught the class because it was so powerful. But if we would have called the class Emotional Freedom Technique, most of those guys wouldn't have shown up because they weren't looking for emotional freedom. And so I think it closes off the people we can offer it to. And those are small concerns. My biggest concern with the name emotional freedom technique is I don't actually think the goal in anything that I do is to be free of my emotions. Um, on my left arm, I have a number of tattoos. They are pieces of fine art from all over the world that I love. Two of those tattoos are paintings by Oswaldo Guayasamin. Um, Oswaldo Guayasamin was an Ecuadorian painter who was called the Picasso of the Americas. In addition to creating amazing art, he used his wealth, he used his fame, he used his fortune to keep pre-Columbian artifacts in South America and to lift workers up. And a number of years ago, I got a chance to study Spanish in Ecuador. And his house 
after his passing was turned into a museum. Along this one wall was a dozen different paintings, each one of them representing a different emotion. And the paintings were five or six feet tall. And as I stood in front of these paintings for the very first time in my life, just looking at pieces of art, tears started to stream down my face from the power that was being conveyed inside of those particular paintings. It is such a rich experience. Again, so much so I now have two of those images tattooed on my arm that I carry with me everywhere I go. And I don't want to be free of that emotional experience. I don't want to be released from that particular emotional experience. And so again, I understand that sensation when we have been liberated from a deep, heavy emotion, how it feels good to be free of that. But I don't actually think the goal of transformation is emotional freedom. The primary reason why I don't think our goal is to be emotionally free is not just that richness that I just shared, but also the emotions that we experience are the emotions that are the information that our subconscious mind is giving us about our experience. Back in episode number one of this entire series, we dove deep into this, but just in a small cursory way, every single emotion is conveying a piece of information. I feel frustrated when my needs are not being met. I feel sadness when I'm disconnected from something that is important. I, I feel angry when I'm perceiving an attack. I feel overwhelmed when I don't feel like I have enough time or enough resources to do what is in front of me. That is good, useful information. One of my favorite things to tap on when I'm working with a client who's in grief and sadness is a reframe of, the reason why I'm feeling this grief and this sadness is because the thing that I've lost is so important. And how lucky am I to have experienced something that I'm able to feel grief and sadness from? It's information from our internal guidance that says this is important. Frustration is saying my needs aren't being met. It's good for me to know those things. And so if the goal is not to be emotionally free, what then is the goal? For me, the goal of healing, the goal of transformation, regardless of the tool tapping or otherwise, is to be in a circumstance that in every single moment, I have a proportionate, well-informed emotional response. And so let me break that down because there's a couple of components to it. There's proportionate, and there is well-informed emotional response. Because again, the information that we are getting is trying to give us information. And so the example that I love to use is just an experience of fear. So as I sit here in my apartment, I'm about eight and a half miles from Central Park. And in the Central Park Zoo, there are lions. And it is good that I am afraid of lions. They're big cuddly cat things that could rip me limb from limb in a second. But if I never left my apartment because eight miles away, there was a lion in the Central Park Zoo, that is disproportionate. It's keeping me safe, but it's doing it in a disproportionate way. At the end of this recording, if I was to walk out into my living room and into my kitchen and a little bitty mouse scurried across the floor and I jumped on the table and I screamed like a five-year-old, well, that's a misinformed emotional response because the mouse isn't actually dangerous. Its vision is so bad, it doesn't even know I'm a human. I'm just this big mass that's moving through its space that it's scurrying in order to keep safe. And so being afraid is a good and useful thing, but only if that fear is proportionate and well-informed. And so that's what I mean by the goal of tapping and transformation is not to be free of our emotions, but to have a proportionate, well-informed emotional response. And when we start to look at it through that lens, it puts us into a position where we are recalibrating our experience. We're recalibrating, most importantly, our expectations. Because if I sit down to tap or to do anything else, and my goal is to be emotionally free, that's not going to happen. As a human, the only way that I can be emotionally free is if they did something where they're like snipping things inside of my brain, or if I'm so medically sedated, I'm not experiencing anything at all. 
But if my goal is to have a proportionate, well-informed emotional response, then what is happening is I'm hearing very, very clearly the information that my internal guidance is trying to provide me. I hear very, very clearly how I am understanding the world. And so when I sit down to tap on my fear of tigers, I'm not going to tap. So I climb into the cage and I curl up to try and get a little cuddle with the fuzzy thing because that's dangerous. But with each successive round of tapping, what I'm able to do is I'm able to take the belief because there is belief behind every single emotional experience. And what I'm doing is I'm transforming on a subconscious level what that belief is so I see the world more clearly. Because when I see the world more clearly, I have a clear, honest, proportionate, well-informed emotional response, which makes it so much easier for me to live an authentic life that I want. You know, if I'm in a circumstance where I am afraid to speak up at work, and I'm not putting my ideas forward because I'm afraid of judgment. And I'm afraid that I'm going to get in trouble, which in most work environments is not a proportionate response. It's not a well-informed response because my colleagues want to hear from me so we can move forward. The moment I put myself and I make that a proportionate, well-informed response that I can speak up and I can share my ideas freely, all of a sudden my life gets better because I'm now a contributing member to the team. I'm now in a circumstance where I'm helping us to move towards our goal. I'm now in a circumstance where people on my team recognize my competency, which gives me or opportunities, which gives me the opportunity to move forward in a way that is good and useful for me. So as part of this healing fundamental series, the fundamental that is so important. And I really think even though this is the last in the series, I think it's the one that underlines everything else that we do. Every single time I sit down to do transformation, I'm trying to see how I understand the world through my emotions. I'm trying to uncover the story that is underneath it and transform that story to be true. So I have a proportionate, well-informed emotional response. And so if you make that the goal of your transformation, one, not only is it going to be easier to transform because it's something achievable, but two, it's going to help you to create an authentic life that you truly love because you're showing up in a way where you're hearing your internal guidance that is giving you the right information. If you've enjoyed this particular piece of information on the screen right now, you'll actually see a link to the playlist to the entire Healing Transformation series. You can go back to number one where we talk even more about the information of emotion, but check the entire series out.